Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, before going for the detailed analysis in conduction, we need to understand a few of the thermophysical properties. So in this topic, we are going to understand those thermophysical properties. In the various thermophysical properties that we need to take care of while understanding conduction or for that matter any mode of heat transfer rate there are few which are very essential from the subject point of view the thermophysical properties of matter can be classified majorly in two ways one is the transport property and the other one is thermodynamics property now what is transport property transport property talks about the diffusion rate coefficient so there are two transport properties which we are going to look into the first one is thermal conductivity and the second one is kinematic viscosity now thermal conductivity as we have seen in the previous videos talks about the heat transfer rate and kinematic viscosity talks about the momentum transfer so the thermal conductivity is responsible for heat transfer and kinematic viscosity is responsible for the momentum transfer Kinematic viscosity is something that we have studied in the fluid mechanics. So this we are not going to elaborate in this chapter. We will be focusing on the thermal conductivity. In the second case, that is the thermodynamics property, which basically talks about the equilibrium state. Now there are four properties that we can look into. The first one is the density. Second one is specific heat. The third one is heat capacity, which is nothing but the product of density and specific heat. And the final one is thermal diffusivity. Now out of all these, we are going to talk about two properties in detail. The first one is thermal conductivity and the second one is thermal diffusivity. In case of thermal conductivity, by Fourier's law, we have seen previously that the thermal conductivity in x direction can be given as minus, that is this is nothing but the heat flux upon the temperature gradient. So to define thermal conductivity, we can use Fourier's law. By this Fourier's law, we can say that thermal conductivity is nothing but the rate of heat flux per unit temperature gradient. Now in this chart, I have listed the value of thermal conductivity varying from solid to fluids. The value for pure metal ranges from 100 2000 the unit for thermal conductivity here is watt per meter kelvin and for pure metal it varies from around 100 to 1000 similarly here the example given is zinc and silver for pure metal similarly for alloy it varies from 10 to 100 the example here is nickel and aluminium for non metallic solid it again varies from let's say what 1 to 10 the examples are here plastic ice and oxides in the fourth the insulation system the examples are foams and fiber the value again varies from around 0 0.05 to 1 and even in case of fluid let's say liquid it it gives it, uh, the value stays around 0.05 to let's say 0.25 the example is oil water and mercury and for gases obviously the thermal conductivity is very low which is around 0.05 the example is co2 and h2o to understand why the value of thermal conductivity varies from solid to gases or solid to fluid this much we need to understand what is the basic mechanism for thermal conductivity in case of solids and fluids now thermal conductivity in case of solids it depends on two parameter the first one is the migration of free electrons which are there in solids and the lattice vibration now as you might be aware of the solids have a very packed lattice structure so here the value of k can be written as ke plus KL where KE is nothing but the thermal conductivity responsible for the migration of free electron and here 
the KL talks about the thermal conductivity which is caused by the lattice vibration. Now for pure metals, as we have seen previously, the thermal conductivity was the highest. Why? Because the value of Ke is very high as compared to the value of Kl. Now what is Ke? The thermal conductivity due to free electrons. So obviously due to the metals, they have a lot of electrons bank with them. So they can afford to give few electrons. So because of which the thermal conductivity of the pure metals are quite high. Now here the value of KL that is the thermal conductivity due to lattice vibration is very small as compared to the value of Ke. Next one is alloy. In case of alloy even though the value of Ke that is the thermal conductivity due to free electron migration is high as compared to KL but the value of KL itself is not negligible. Means there are few alloys where due to the pack lattice structure the value of KL is as good as the value of Ke. In the third one that is in case of non-metallic solid the value of Ke is very small as compared to the value of Kl. So it is evident from this that in case of non-metallic solid the value of Ke is small as compared to the value of Kl. Now it is evident from this expression that in case of non-metallic solid the thermal conductivity is majorly influenced by lattice vibration but not by the free electrons. To quote few examples in case of non-metallic solid we can talk about this one here. Now here I have compared the thermal conductivity of a crystalline material with the thermal conductivity of the amorphous material. Now what is crystalline material? Crystalline materials are those materials where the lattice structure is quite defined. And what is amorphous material where the lattice structure is undefined? The example here is quartz and here the example is glass. So obviously we can see that the value of K for the quartz is very high as compared to the value of K for the glasses. So means what I mean to say here is that the thermal conductivity is influenced largely by the lattice vibration. So better the lattice vibration or closer pack the structure, the better will be the thermal conductivity. The fourth one is the insulation system. Now here insulation systems are nothing but those material where we have to reduce the thermal conductivity by introducing some features. Now here what they do, they basically reduce the value of K by introducing small voids. Okay, now those voids can be gases or air. Now the example, best example is foams. Now let us talk about thermal conductivity for fluids. We can call this as thermal conductivity for liquid or gases also. Now in this case, the value of K is directly proportional to the number of particles per unit volume that is N. It is again directly proportional to the mean molecular speed and it is again directly proportional to the mean free path. Now what do you mean by mean free path? The mean free path is nothing but the path traveled by the molecules before bombarding with the another molecules. Now as temperature increases, the number of particles per unit volume do increase so is the mean molecular velocity or mean molecular speed also increases as the temperature increases the value of n and c that is the number of particles per unit volume and the mean molecular speed both do increases so obviously from this expression we can make out if the value of n and c in is increasing then by default the value of k should increases so we can say that as the temperature increases, the thermal conductivity of the fluid do increases. Now the thermal conductivity is independent of pressure. Even though the pressure has its influence on the value of N, C and lambda. As the pressure increases, the mean molecular speed increases and so do the mean free path. But still it is not really evident that the increase in pressure has its effects on the thermal conductivity. So here for our content we can assume that the thermal conductivity of the fluid is independent of the pressure. Again in case of non-metallic liquid the behavior of K is very different. In case of non-metallic liquid as the temperature increases the thermal conductivity decreases. To explain the behavior of thermal conductivity of the fluid with increasing temperature, we can look at this chart. Now here I have drawn a chart 
where on the y axis we have got thermal conductivity and on the x axis we have got temperature the unit of thermal conductivity is watt per meter kelvin and the unit of temperature is kelvin which varies from 200 to 1000 now as the temperature increases you can observe that all this fluid you call it freon carbon dioxide air steam helium or hydrogen all this fluid as the temperature increases the thermal conductivity do increases so the rate of increase is higher in case of hydrogen and helium and lower in case of air steam co2 and freon now this is what we can talk about how the thermal conductivity of the solids and liquid varies we have seen with the temperature variation how the thermal conductivity in case of solid as well as in case of liquid how it changes now this is all about thermal conductivity now let us talk about thermal diffusivity the second topic was thermal diffusivity we call this as alpha now how to define this alpha we have defined this alpha as k by rho cp now what is k k is nothing but your thermal conductivity and what is rho cp rho cp is nothing but your thermal storage so basically the thermal diffusivity talks about what amount of heat is conducted to what amount of heat is storage so means if the value of alpha is higher means we can say that the heat is conducted more as compared to stored similarly if the value of alpha is less we can say that the thermal conductivity is less or the heat conducted is less as compared to the heat storage the best example of lesser alpha is metals as you might have observed in case of metal the thermal conductivity is higher but similar to the thermal conductivity its thermal storage is also higher so that is why in case of metal even though the thermal conductivity is higher but compared to the thermal conductivity the storage capacity of the metal is also high we can look at the case where the thermal conductivity of the few of the metal is lower here in this case in most of the metal the thermal conductivity is high and so is the thermal storage capacity is also high but still the thermal diffusivity is low why because the rate by which the thermal conductivity is higher is lesser as compared to the rate by which the thermal storage is higher hence we can conclude that the value of thermal diffusivity depends on both that is the rate of increase of thermal conductivity and the rate of increase of thermal storage that is all about the various thermophysical property that we must know for this subject thank you so much for watching this video please stay tuned to the ikeda and please subscribe to the ikeda